Good morning all. Uh, transistors 2N3904, there are about 30 or 40 of them here and they're all dead because I killed them one by one. So why did I destroy so many transistors? Well here's the story. So first of all let's just check that they are in fact dead. So I've built a little uh, two transistor A stable multi vibrator here. Uh, there are two LEDs actually, you can't see the other one, it's around the back, but there's a, a green one around the back. So let's take out the working transistor, I'll put that there, and put in one of these transistors, and lo and behold, it doesn't flash because the transistor is dead. So I'm just drawing the circuit for the A-stable multivibrator in case uh, you're interested in that. Capacitor there, capacitor there, and then that goes to the base of that one, and the base of that one goes to there, and then there's a base resistor uh, that goes to there. Uh, this is a load actually, so I've got LEDs in here with uh, a resistor, and this all goes to VCC. That's my A stable multi vibrator circuit, which I'm using to test these transistors. Let's try another one, see if that one flashes. Nope. Let's try another one, see if that one flashes. No, <laughs> they're all dead. Let's try the Sinometer in HFE mode. Now, this socket is truly abysmal for fitting these transistors in. You've got to get their legs back together like that. Right, EBC, let's try and Engage that in the socket. Oh, I knew this was going to be difficult. Oh, this really is it. Oh, there it is. There it goes. It's a dreadful socket. So we're showing um, an HFE again of 400 or so and it's drifting down. This one shows a gain of 13. Well, that doesn't sound quite right. Let's try one more. If I can get the legs straight and into the transistor tester. I'm not sure this really is a transistor tester. Oh, that one's showing 800, 700 and rapidly falling. Can't see that very well, can we? There we are. 720, rapidly falling. What should the gain of a 2N3904 actually be? Right, 2N3904 and on the second page we have HFE now we'll go for uh, 10 milliamps because that's the one where they've given a minimum and a maximum. 2N3904, minimum 100, maximum 300. No units for HFE, of course. So 930 drifting slowly down. Clearly not right. Actually, let's put a, a working transistor in there. I've got some over here. These work. Let's put that one EBC in the socket, if I can get it in the socket. Oh, it's really not a good socket. Well, there we are, 244. It's not drifting. That's a working transistor. So let's move on to how these transistors got fried and why I killed so many without realizing it. I mean, I wouldn't deliberately destroy transistors, even though these are only a penny each. I've just bought another pack of 100 for 99 cents. Well, it has to do with these six little circuits here. I'm designing this fantastic oscillatory type thing. You can see my audio cable here going off to a speaker. So let's fit a few blue LEDs and see what these little circuits do. That one fell on the floor. Okay, let's put this one in here. Yes, they oscillate. So these are little oscillators made up of a single transistor. They're single transistor oscillators. And uh, they use... Oh, listen to that. Doesn't that sound fabulous? They use the transistor in a rather odd way. Because it's very difficult to build an oscillator using a single transistor, capacitor and resistor. And this uses the transistor in its... Mm, well, it's either reverse Zener or it's reverse avalanche mode. 
So there we are, all six oscillators mixed together with this little audio mixer, making a right cacophony. Right, let's take these LEDs out because it is a bit of a noise, isn't it? I think my batteries might be getting low because the frequencies are all <laughs> changing as I introduce these circuits into the mix. Now, for those of you who regularly say to me, Julian, never take components out of circuit with the power on and don't put components into circuit with the power on. Well, on this occasion, you'd be right, because that's what killed these transistors. Now, nine times out of ten, you can pull a component out of a breadboard and no harm comes to it. You can put that component back into the breadboard and no harm comes to it. But just every now and again, you find a circuit which is a component killer. So what's the circuit? Well, it's this VCC 18 volts, two 9 volt batteries in series. And that's quite a high voltage. Resistor 1K, mm, a fairly low value resistor. Then there's the transistor. Now, this is the really odd bit because the emitter of this NPN transistor points up to VCC. Then we come down here. Now this could go straight to ground, but in actual fact, I've put an LED in here just so it lights up and does something exciting. And this is zero volts. That's the circuit minus one more component. Let's put it in. And it's this one, it's a capacitor, but it's a big one. It's uh, 4.7 microfarads. Now I've used little uh, multi-layer ceramics, but you can get these in really high values these days. So there it is, 4.7 microfarads, 1K ohm, LED, in this case blue, but actually you can use different colors. In fact, I'll show you now what the different colors do. Let's put a blue one in, that gives that tone. Let's put a yellow one in, and that gives a different tone. And that's because of the different chemistry of these two LEDs. So you can actually tell the nitride LEDs, the blue ones, or the white ones, from the phosphide LEDs. Oh, that's not a very good example, because I've got a feeling this oscillator had a rather high pitch to start with. Let's go for two that are the same. That's blue. And if I go for red, a phosphide LED, we get a higher tone. Yeah, these batteries are a bit dead, aren't they? So yeah, we can tell the nitrides from the phosphides. Incidentally, it's this point here, which goes off to my amplifier. So this is the point which I'm listening to. This is where the oscillations occur. So how does this circuit work? And also, incidentally, this LED is not actually necessary. You can put that straight down to ground. Well, what happens is this top point of the capacitor charges up towards 18 volts because we've got a circuit consisting of a 1K resistor, capacitor and LED. Now, when the voltage across this capacitor reaches the transistor's reverse breakdown voltage, and I'm not sure whether this is the Zener breakdown or the avalanche breakdown, this transistor will conduct in the reverse direction. There's nothing connected to the base of the transistor. So that shorts out effectively. This capacitor brings its voltage down very quickly. So brings this point going to the amplifier down towards, well, at this point here, which is on a blue LED about 3.3 or something like that. Then the transistor switches off, having done its shorting out breakdown thing, and the capacitor charges back up again. And so this thing oscillates at these sorts of frequencies. Now we need the high voltage here because this transistor can't be coaxed into breaking down. If I use a nine volt battery, 12 volts is a bit borderline, particularly if I've got this LED in here because that absorbs or that re removes some of the voltage from across uh, the transistor. 18 volts is fine. That's enough to make this transistor break down when it sees, well, I don't know the exact voltage that's going to be across it at the point where it breaks down. I suppose I could scope this and find out. Now I've discovered that most of these 2N3904 transistors do operate perfectly well 
in these oscillator circuits using this reverse breakdown effect. But I thought that they, that they wouldn't. I thought that there would be quite a lot of transistors that simply wouldn't work in this configuration. And some don't, it's true. But uh, I've now discovered that most, in fact, do. But that wasn't what I was thinking when I was pulling transistors out of this circuit and then putting new ones into this circuit. And you can see what happens if you do that. If I remove that transistor from this circuit, well, I've got a 1K resistor charging a 4.7 microfarad capacitor to 18 volts minus about 3 volts, so 15 volts across that capacitor. Then I get my brand new transistor and I plug it into the breadboard. And what happens? The transistor instantly goes into reverse breakdown and all the energy, or a lot of the energy, inside that capacitor is immediately shunted directly through the transistor at very close proximity. That's a lot of current. And if it's an avalanche breakdown, the avalanche effect is um, has a positive temperature coefficient. So as the transistor conducts and heats up, so more current is conducted through the transistor and you get this avalanche effect as, as it shorts out more and more and more current. And that's what was killing these transistors. So I was putting them into my circuits thinking, hmm, this transistor won't oscillate in reverse avalanche mode. Oh, this one won't either. One or two occasionally would. So they survived having all the energy in this capacitor dumped across the PN junction or the NPN junction as it is. And so I thought I was testing transistors. But no, I was destroying transistors. And it was it was only when I sort of thought about this circuit and thought, what am I actually doing here? I'm putting a transistor directly across a charged capacitor. And it switches on because of its reverse breakdown, goes into avalanche mode. And all the energy in the capacitor, or probably a lot of it, gets dumped into that transistor and just fries it. Once I realized what I was doing, I changed my approach. So what I was doing after I killed all these transistors was this. I'd put a LED in this circuit, I'd get it to oscillate. Fine, that transistor's good. Then I'd take the LED out. So now this capacitor is not charged. I can remove the transistor. That's a good transistor. Let's get a brand new one out of my tray here. Splay the legs ever so slightly so that it'll go into the breadboard put it in without the LED. Before, I, when I killed all these, I was putting them in with the LED in place. Let's put that in there. Bring the LED back in almost as a switch. I'm using this to switch this circuit on and off. And my brand new transistor oscillates fine in the reverse breakdown mode, and I'm no longer killing transistors. So there we are. These transistors are all cooked in one form or another. They've all entered reverse breakdown, gone into avalanche mode, conducted, probably got very hot on the, in, on the inside of the transistor. I mean, there was no smoke. There was no drama. I couldn't see anything, but they're all going on the bin. I've ordered a hundred new transistors. Oh, it's Chinese New Year, isn't it? So they're going to come in, I don't know, three or four weeks. And now I can move on with my uh, six oscillator project. Let's go for red, green and yellow LEDs this time, which should give me higher pitches. Oh, that's interesting. Is that one oscillating? Yes, it is. Let's put these back in. Let's have another red one. They're all very similar frequencies, so when these things oscillate, they oscillate in much the same way at much the same frequency. That one's a little higher. Must be something funny about, or maybe the capacitor's um, a little bit out of tolerance. And there it is. Six. I think these are sawtooth waves, all mixed together in an amplifier. Cheerio.